So in case you all have been living under a rock here lately, we just celebrated 100 episodes here at DYSG. And for me, I can say that it's been a wild ride. It's been a great ride. And I could not have done it without the influence and the encouragement from my brothers and sisters in arms who also have podcasts. So I'll take this opportunity to give some flowers out. All right. So shout out to all the podcasters that rock with DYSG. First of all, the incomparable, my Obi-Wan, Mr. Chris Rowley, Rowley Show, Scrappy Gold Podcast, Blue Jack Creative. Thank you, sir, for all you, for everything you've done for me and for Do You Speak Geek. The other homie, the big homie, Uncle Navy Montel, Blur Corn Speaks. Shout out to Miss Angie. Great podcast over there. Shout out to my boy Skip.88, my boy Micah over at Blurred Over. Shout out to the whole Blurred Over team. Spicy Ramen Podcast, my boy Shaq, JP and J Love. Black Ramen Podcast, Chatty Patty, Bree and Derbs. What's going on, y'all? Uh, Head Nerds in Charge, my homie King Kurt, Ani Sassy, and Teffy Wonder. Uh, the Blurred Girl, Kamra Horn, shout out to you, girl. Uh, of course, can't get, can't forget the Blurred Vision, my boy Jordan and Michael over there. Shout out to them, big influence on me in this show. The homie Hey Archer, what's good, my guy? Uh, the Sundercats, check them out, y'all. Dodgy and the homie Manuel Carmona. Um, FTO Nerd Talk, D, Shaza, May, and Angela, shout out to y'all. Everybody gets one. Alex, a.k.a. Mr. Problematic, SF Design. SF Design, amazing photographer, by the way. And of course, CC the Geek, Blurt Without Fear, The Boncho Podcast, KC and Akil, what up? The Blurred's Eye View, Chris Fury DC, and Candy B Cosplay, what's good, y'all? Healing with Aloha, The Lady Deslin, how you doing out there? Blurred Spot Podcast, June Crystal and Kid Phantom, and uh, Stuck Button Podcast, shout out to Debo. So many, y'all. And if I didn't name you, please forgive my mind, not my heart. But yeah, shout out to all the podcasters. Y'all keep doing y'all thing. Y'all keep grinding. Y'all keep making it happen out here, man. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for being the influence and the inspiration for DYSG. Ladies and gentlemen, blurds and nerds, freaks and geeks, this is Do You Speak Geek? What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Nick. This is DYSG episode 101. Shout out to everybody who has been rocking with DYSG thus far. All my avid listeners, all the current subscribers and all new subscribers and followers. Welcome to Do You Speak Geek. This is the podcast where we give you all the latest and greatest in news and reviews from the geek realm. If you're listening on Spreaker, shout out to Spreaker. That's the home team. If you're not listening on Spreaker, you're probably listening elsewhere. Because we are elsewhere. We are everywhere. So wherever you get your podcast, please be sure to subscribe and listen to Do You Speak Geek. Do You Speak Geek.com, the central hub for everything DYSG. We got merch, we got blogs, photos, videos, got a little bit of everything there for y'all. Please be sure to hit up Do You Speak Geek.com today. Follow us on social media Facebook at DYSGFB. Twitter at DYSG underscore tweets and Instagram at Do You Speak Geek. Also, TikTok at Do You Speak Geek. The YouTube channel is the only place where you can find the Donna and Daddy show. Please be sure to subscribe, like, Hulk, smash that bell for all notifications and leave your comments. We want to know what you guys think. We just recently did our November edition for First Friday Fights. Please check that out. It is very, very interesting. All right, people, we got a little bit of a show here for y'all. Not too big, but, you know, we still got a show for y'all. We're going to still give y'all that heat no matter what. So let's do what we do about this time. Let's speak geek. Suit up. I want to be the very best. Talk nerdy to me.
All right, we got reviews coming at you at Rapid Fire. The Eternals, beautifully shot and terrifically acted. I mean, the, the acting was amazing. Story was great. The last bit of the movie got a little crazy, so to speak, but overall, insane movie. Two end credit scenes. Please be sure to stick around for those. Dope movie. Forza Horizon 5. Yo. This game, yo, it makes me want to go buy an Xbox, seriously. It's the result of a racing studio at the peak of its craft and is the best open world racing game available right now. There is nothing better than Forza Horizon 5. Play with it if you want to, you will be enjoying the time of your life. And the final review we have this week is Finch. Tom Hanks delivers an excellent performance in Finch, but the most, the, the post-apocalyptic drama feels a little soulless at sometimes and you know it's it's more of a mashup than a very coherent film but it's tom hanks i mean we can't really argue with that dude was one of the dopest actors of all time so if nothing else check it out for him alone and his performance let's hop into my favorite portion of the show y'all know the vibes source wall man you come right out of a comic book behold the source wall can you read my son well, that depends. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with reading a story and looking at the pictures. Enough said, Stan. The pull list this week Venom number one. An epic new era for the Sinister Symbiont starts here. Hot off the heels of Venom 200 and Extreme Carnage, we're closing out 2021 with one of the most ambitious books in symbiont history. An all-new Venom, um, and it's going to be a dope, dope little start here because we got Al Ewing writing for it this time, who just wrapped up Immortal Hulk, and he's be joining Ram V, a horror machinata all his own, to craft the mind-bending and gut-wrenching tale of symbiosis, the likes of which the MU has never seen. As if that wasn't enough, they've been joined by industry legend Brian Hitch, who is leaving it all on the page. They haven't led you astray just yet, or have they? So trust us when we say you have never seen a Venom like this. Please be sure to pick that one up this week. I am Batman number three. Jace attempts to stem the tide of misinformation from the seer as this mysterious adversary sends a very heavy armed mob to a juvenile detention facility to break out a member of their militia. When Jace realizes his mother Tanya is at that facility, He'll stop at nothing to save her, but will he be too late? I mean, it's Batman. Parents gotta die at some point, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but yeah, it's gotta happen at some point. Robin and Batman, number one, the legendary story of Batman and Robin has reached nearly mythic proportions. The crime-fighting dynamic duo always one step ahead of the criminals they pursue and never meeting a case too big. Well, this isn't that story. This is the story of a young Dick Grayson, newly orphaned, struggling to find his way in a strange, difficult, dark new world. This is the story of Robin and Batman, the best-selling creative team behind the Eisner winning Descender, Jeff Lemire and Dustin Nguyen reunite in Gotham City to tell the story of a remarkable young man learning to navigate an incredible new world. Jeff Lemire is gonna kill it. I already know, the guy wrote Sweet Tooth, it's gonna be dope. Shang-Chi number six, Shang-Chi versus Thor. For several months now, Shang-Chi has reintegrated himself into the Marvel Universe by bumping heads with the likes of Spider-Man, Captain America, Wolverine, the Fantastic Four, and Iron Man. And each time he has proven to be the unstoppable force his father trained him to be. But his dad never taught him how to defeat a god. Don't miss the end of the first arc of Shang-Chi versus the Marvel Universe. Can't wait to see that matchup go down, baby. Come on now, Shang-Chi versus Thor, let's get it. Ordinary Gods 5, with the four of the five awakened, all eyes turn to the final piece of the puzzle. But who is the prodigy? Where in the world are they? And who will get to them first? God only knows. <laughs> See what I did there? God, gods, yeah. Anyway, Nyx, no, not me, Nyx, in YX. From the pages of Vampirella, Vampirella and Sacred Six come, comes Nyx, 
daughter of a human and mad god chaos himself. Nyx's mortal side has been growing stronger, troubling her with all too human emotions. Fortunately for her, there's still a side of her that transforms into a demon of living flame and requires her to feed on the life force of living beings to survive. <laughs> well, that's gotta suck. Can a half demon find her place in our world? Happiness? Even love? Probably not, but she's about to get dragged into her dad's workplace problem. God only knows what that's gonna look like. And finally, we have Phenom X number one. Wrongfully imprisoned and desperate to regain his freedom, Max Gomez agrees to become a subject of an underground government experiment. When the trial gives him phenomenal shape-shifting abilities, Gomez learns his new freedom requires surviving a super-powered war fought in the streets of NYC. Should be a pretty good one. I'll be picking that one up for sure. And for all these I just mentioned, don't forget to pick those up at your local comic book store this Wednesday. Let's watch this. Watch this, y'all. Thunder. 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 Lannister always pays his debts. Whoa, dude. I am the villain of the story. All right, in TV and movie news, Star Wars The Book of Boba Fett gets its first trailer release. Boba Fett blasts his way back into the galaxy from a far, far away village, first in the first village of the Star Wars spinoff, The Book of Boba Fett. Directed and executive produced by Sin City filmmaker Robert Rodriguez, Robert Rodriguez, sorry, bleh, couldn't say that for a second there, who helmed a Fett focus and action packed episode of the first live action Star Wars series. The spinoff reunites Jon Favreau and David Fioni ahead of the upcoming third season of Mandalorian. Spinning out of Disney and Lucasfilm's The Mandalorian Season 2, where the armored bounty hunter, played by Tamira Morrison, rescues the cyborg assassin Fennec Shan by Ming Na Wen before taking the throne of Jabba the Hutt. The Book of Fett premieres this December on Disney+. Plus. The trailer looks absolutely amazing. Y'all, please check this out. It is so dope. I cannot wait for this December. It's going to be an amazing time to be alive if you're a Star Wars fan. Speaking of trailers, we also got the Morbius trailer. Yo, Morbius, Jared Leto as the titular vampire was supposed to be released back in 2020, but of course we all know Rona. And now fans have been waiting a while to see Morbius, especially since the first trailer arrived online just last year. We still got a couple of months before Morbius releases in theaters in January, but Sony has released a second trailer to show off a little more of the action. As you all know, Leto stars as the titular film Morbius, a science with a rare blood disease who sets out to find a cure and save others who have the same condition. In trying to cure one issue, Morbius creates another, turning himself into a vampire. Movie stars also Tyrese Gibson, Matt Smith, Adria Adjourn, and Michael Keaton. Now, Keaton's role is one of the most fans have been paying attention to as he shocked everyone when he showed up at the end of the first trailer playing Adrian Toomes, aka Vulture in Spider-Man. This is definitely some speculation to say that, hey, Morbius is in the MCU because we have confirmed that Venom is from the last movie, Let There Be Carnage. I think we are working on creating this huge Spider-Verse and I am 125% here for it. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. Check those trailers out and you guys get an opportunity to. Let's grab the sticks and hop into some life. Peace, love, and video games. That's all like Donkey Kong. Yeah. That man is playing Galaga. Okay, gamers, one piece of news here real quickly. Marvel's Avengers finally gets a release date for Spider-Man. After months and months of waiting, further complicated by the COVID-19 pandemic, Spider-Man is finally coming to Marvel Avengers on November 30th. 
But as mentioned before, it is exclusively for PlayStation players. Spider-Man is releasing as part of the Spider-Man with Great Power Hero event in Marvel's Avengers, which will tell the story of Spider-Man through unlockable challenges. Surprisingly, Square Onyx made the release date announcement as only a small part of its broader content roadmap update published this past Thursday. I know, Xbox fans, you guys are hurt, you guys are crushed, you guys are just, you're so, uh, yeah. But listen, exclusives happen. That's just the way it is. It's the way it's always been since the beginning of time. You've had people who had Nintendos who couldn't play Sonic. You had people who had Sega Genesis games who couldn't play Mario. That's just how it is. It's, they're called exclusives for a reason. And you just got to live with it, man. Get over it. It's fine. It's fine. I'll be playing Spider-Man, though. <laughs> Oh boy. All right, nerds. Let's mark out. So, what you gonna do? Goodbye and good night. Bang! Okay, this is really nothing to mark out about. It's sad. It's frustrating and it's a little it's a little maddening if you want to call it that as well too so this past i want to say what was it thursday night yeah wwe released several superstars and just to give you a few of the names the post the new york post confirmed that wwe by the way the statement was issued to the post not on WWE's own website. They released Ember Moon, Keith Lee, Karrion Cross, Mia Yim, Grand Metalik, Nia Jax, Lance Dorado, Jit Rama, Katrina Cortez, Trey Baxter, Zadia Ramir, Jesse Kamea, B Fab, Oni Lorcan, Frankie Monet, Eva Marie, and Scarlett Bordeaux. And of course, they ended it with the famous quote. Say it with me. We wish them the best in their future endeavors. Now, a source of knowledge of WWE's operations told the Post that one of the reasons Nia Jax was released was that she has um, refused to be vaccinated. Now, that is interesting right there, because who's to say that this trend may not follow across all sports? I mean, you all see what's going on with um old boy from uh the, the brooklyn nets i can't think of his name i know he's a dookie so it doesn't really matter but yeah it's crazy that that's why she got released and the fact that she's been around this long i mean this isn't new pandemic this is a damn near two-year-old pandemic here we're, we're dealing with now so yeah that's kind of crazy that she got released because of that reason i will say this though she's never gonna wrestle again not because of the whole vaccination thing is because we all know Nia Jax was one of if not the most unsafe wrestler in this era of wrestling right now so no one's touching her with 10-foot pole if I'm Tony Khan I'm calling Keith Lee right now uh there's a few other names here who I see going other places I see Karrion Cross and Scarlett going back to TNA I see that happening it's just sad that a lot of these people are getting fired man and it's right before the holidays it's it's horrible and for budget cut reasons again, why they just want to cite this? I mean, come on, man. Y- y'all, WWE is trash. They are trash, and I want to see them win, but I don't think it's going to happen. Anyway, that is the pod, people. Thank you all for listening. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Again, thank you all for listening. Please, please be sure to follow this podcast, subscribe to this podcast, like this podcast. Let your boy know what you think about this podcast. Visit the website, doyousweetgeek.com. Follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Check out the YouTube channel. Like and subscribe to the videos there. As always, people, live to play, play to win, win to live. I speak geek. Do you speak geek?